Good evening. My name is Sherry Mayberry, and I want to welcome all of you this evening to um, our webinar, Connecting the Dots, Linking the GWIS Experiences with Skills and Assessment. Um, on the right-hand side of your screen, hopefully you see that there are two handouts. Um, if you have not had a chance to download those, or don't worry, they will be on our website. And uh, we can show you a little bit later where you can find those later. But those were just two documents that Beth will be using tonight with our training. Um, we've got a lot to go over tonight, so we're going to get started real quick. But if you have any questions during the webinar, again, on the right-hand side of your screen, you see the little question box. You can type the question in there. And in fact, Beth will be asking you to participate by typing information in that question box. But if you have other questions during the presentation, just type them in there and we'll try to get to you as quickly as possible. Um, again, Beth Smith is going to be presenting the material. My name is Sherry Mayberry, and we're going to get, this is being recorded, so there's a lot to go over, but you will see the recording tomorrow um, if you want to review any of the information we cover. Um, but with that, I'm going to turn it over to Beth, and again, thanks for coming. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome. This is Connecting the Dots. Um, I'm really excited, actually, about this webinar. There's a long story behind how this all came to be, but the bottom line is we feel like this is going to be a very helpful tool for all of you who are GWIS customers and also for those of you who are not to kind of see how GWIS does things and how we help you connect developmental areas with skills and then with whatever formal child assessment tool you are using. As Sherry said, there's going to be plenty of time for you to contribute during this webinar. We'll be using the question box for you to type in your ideas, your answers to questions I may ask. Um, but I hope that you walk away from here. That is the goal, having a better understanding of how the GWIS curriculum helps you see how the activities and experiences you do with children link to the developmental areas, link to specific skills, which then can be linked to your child assessment. So with all that said, which is a mouthful, um, let us proceed. So what will you learn? First of all, we're gonna talk about picture codes. Some of you who are customers should know what those picture codes are, but we're gonna go over that again. We're going to talk about how we can use the picture codes to connect to the developmental areas. And in the GWIS curriculum, for those of you who are not customers, we cover all 10 developmental areas. What are learning indicators? What are those? Where can you find them in the GWIS curriculum? Why do we use them? Um, where is there a list? What is this new component we've been talking about that is going to be part of the July curriculum called Connecting the Dots? And how can you use that new component to connect to your formal child assessment? So again, as Sherry said, a lot to cover. And I will be trying to go as slow as I can, but again, this is recorded, so you can go back and listen to it when you have more time, um, because we know it's evening. We do try to keep things moving along, and that's why we post these as a recording, so you can always go back and review, because it is a lot of material. So we're going to start with a question using that question box. For those of you who are customers of GWIS, what is a picture code in the GWIS curriculum? So you can write your answer if you know in the question box, and Sherry's going to read some of your answers out to us. Just take your time. I know we've got some customers out there that know what those are on your pages <laughs> and your, on your everyday pages. <laughs> those little picture codes at the top of the page, each activity. Anybody know? I'm telling you. Oh, here we go. Well, um, there one of them is a paintbrush. <laughs> That's the it first is a paintbrush. And, and what I want to know is, you know, what does that paintbrush relate to? I mean, not specifically, which you probably should know that too, but we'll start with why is that paintbrush even there? How it links to the standards. Yay. And then um, the paintbrush, the first responded art. So, and it's how these relate to the standards and let's see, identifies type of learning, mm -hmm. um, the developmental area, 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so th those are good. Excellent. Okay, we're going to continue on here and cover exactly what those picture codes are because we do have folks on here who are not customers of GWIS. There are 10 picture codes, actually 11, but we won't talk about that. I'll explain that in a minute, and 10 developmental areas. In the GWIS lesson plans, which you're going to look at on the next slide, we use these picture codes so that you know when you do an experience with the GWIS curriculum exactly what developmental areas you are covering. So if you see, for instance, the speech bubble, that's what I call this, you know that that experience is addressing language development. If you see the stack of books, then you know it's literacy. The number one in a circle is math. The magnifying glass is science. The question mark is logic and reasoning. The world is social studies. The heart is social and emotional development. Here's the one that throws you up. So we have two for creative arts because we have the music note if it has something to do with music and we have the paintbrush if it has to do with dramatic play or fine arts like drawing or painting. Physical development and health is the hand and approaches to learning is the smiley face. So when you're looking at the Gee Whiz lesson plans, at the very top of every activity, you're going to see the name of the activity, and then you're going to have this list of developmental areas addressed. And you're going to see a series of these picture codes. So when you look at your lesson plans, it's very important to know when you see the different symbols what they mean, because that tells you what developmental area you're addressing. So if you're a customer, take some time and quiz yourself. You know, okay, I see a smiley face. Now, what area was that? In the front of every GWIS teacher's guide on page two or page one, if you don't want to count the cover, is this exact chart. So you can always flip back to that and look and see exactly which one of these symbols connects with each, each of the developmental areas. This information is always also in the user's guide. So when we talk in the user's guide about what language development is and what it looks like, you're going to see that symbol there. So there's multiple places you can go to help you remember what these symbols mean, but it's super important that you know because this is going to help you connect the dots. Okay, step one, that's your quiz for the evening, is to practice memorizing basically what all these symbols mean so when you look at your lesson plans you know what it's, what developmental areas you're going to address so let's look at what that looks like here's an example of an experience taken from our june curriculum called packing and shipping okay and in this experience it's what i call a guided play experience because you're going to set up the environment with boxes and tape and crayons and tissue paper and scissors and the children are going to play and pretend and pack things up and they might even if they're older and developmentally ready um, have you dictate an address for you to write on the box like they're going to ship it to somebody but look at the list of picture codes up here at the top of this experience okay and those of you who are customers think really hard right now we just looked at the chart can you remember what any of these symbols mean? So before I go any further, I'm going to see if any of the customers out there can pick one of these symbols and tell me what areas it addresses. So in the question box, you can just type in the area and I'm going to give you one. So for instance, the stack of books is literacy knowledge. All right, so I've given you that one. See if you can figure out what any of these others mean and type it in the question box. Let's see how many you can get. We've got approaches to learning. Yep, that's the smiley face. Language development, I think they typed that in right before you did. <laughs> Speech um, bubble. <laughs> yeah, heart, social, and emotional. Correct. Uh, I'm not going to repeat the same ones. No, that's uh, fine. Okay, uh, physical development. Okay, that's your little hand over here. And social and emotional. So let's see. That's all we've got so far. A few more left. How about the paintbrush or the magnifying glass? Anybody know? Paintbrush, magnifying. That's the two we have left. 
keep in mind creative arts oh, include we got arts. arts and we got science Yay. excellent Back yay you did it <laughs> perfect okay so now yeah, we got a lot of them <laughs> in this one g whiz experience and this is important especially for those of you who are not familiar with what we do at g whiz these picture codes help you know that when you do packing and shipping as an activity you're covering seven different developmental areas out of ten and if you really stretch it you probably could look at the other three and see if you could rate them in there so you will never see an experience in GWIZ that's just one area, like creative arts or language, because every experience you do encompasses many developmental areas. So let's look at this experience a little bit in more detail, right? So again, you're gonna set out the boxes, the tape, all these things. And we have some of our experiences like this one leveled so that you can adapt them for different developmental er developmental levels. So your, you know, your toddlers, twos and young threes may be doing this a little bit differently or your expectations may be a little different than say your older threes, fours and advanced preschoolers, all right? But in every GWIS experience, connecting back up to this list of these picture codes, we're also gonna tell you in the first bullet if you read, what some, not all, because otherwise this would get too long, some of the main goals are. For instance, this is an excellent way for them to build fine motor control, right? They're going to be putting things in boxes. You're going to be using tape. They might be using scissors. Um, and in this case, with the toddlers and twos, they're probably just going to enjoy putting things in, taking things out, right? And perfect time to reinforce positional concepts in and out. Um, your threes and fours and more advanced preschoolers, like I said earlier, may pretend, engage in dramatic play where they're pretending I'm going to pack up this box and I'm going to ship it to grandma. And even more advanced might want to address it to their grandma if that's who they're sending it to. Sending it to. So let's talk about these developmental areas up here. Language development. So language development encompasses things like speaking and listening gaining vocabulary. Can you see how this experience would address language development? Obviously, right? For your nonverbals, your toddlers, twos, you're going to be describing the box that they use. You're going to be describing what they choose to put in it. You're going to be describing, is it too big? Is it too little? Does it fit just right? You're going to be describing, they're putting it in, they're taking it out. They're building language. Your older children, you're going to be asking open-ended questions about who they're going to send the box to or what they've chosen to put in the box and how did they decide what size box to use. So again, they're going to be using both listening skills and speaking skills. Approaches to learning is things like trying new things, persistence and patience, and working together. Now, cooperation isn't necessarily going to be part of this, but it could be if your older children choose to, but definitely trying new things and persistence. Because let's say I pick something and it doesn't fit, and I have to figure out how to make it fit, okay? Dramatic play, because we're going to pretend that we might, the older, more advanced children might be pretending that they're going to send it to somebody, so they're engaging in dramatic play. Maybe they end up pretending they're the UPS driver or that working in the post office. Literacy knowledge, if in fact your more advanced children choose to address the box, it gives you the opportunity to talk about letters, letter sounds, words, what an address is, punctuation, there's a comma in, in an address, so numerals because in the zip code and the street address there's going to be numerals. Um, so actually you could put math in here too, to be honest. Science problem solving and, and trial and error and testing predictions. You know, is it going to fit in that box or is it not going to fit in that box? And using their senses, you know, what does it look like? What does it feel like? How does it sound? Um, all those things are part of science. And then, of course, physical development and health because it's fine motor coordination, right? You have to pick up the object. You have to put it in the box. You take it out of the box. Maybe if you're more advanced, you use tape or you use scissors or you are actually writing. So, all of these areas, and we're going to talk about the skills that go with them, are addressed in this one simple experience of packing and shipping. Okay? Does that make sense to everyone out there? I hope it does. Give a thumbs up if it does. I think there's a way to give a thumbs up. I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'm going to move on because now you're going to test your knowledge, right? So we here got a lot we have. Of yeses. A... <laughs> okay, a lot good. Of yeses. <laughs> okay, good. So here we have another example of an experience from GWIZ. You will notice I did not give you the picture codes for this one, okay? 
in this experience, they are going to be using um, playground balls or soft foam balls and music. And you can read through there. I mean, I could sit here and read it to you, but you all can read very well, I'm sure, about the different options we have for different developmental areas on how they would you know, perhaps approach this experience. Um, and the same thing for fours and advanced preschoolers. So what I would like you to do is think about those 10 developmental areas. We have language development, literacy knowledge, math knowledge, science knowledge. I'm gonna name each one, I'll go all, all 10 of them. And then I want you to decide which areas you feel like this this activity would address. And, and you don't have to put all 10, all, all 10 or all eight or all six, just pick one or two that you feel like definitely would be addressed in this experience. So here are the 10, language development, literacy knowledge, physical development and health, social studies, science knowledge, math knowledge, logic and reasoning, creative arts, approaches to learning, and social and emotional development. So pick two or three of those and put them in the question box that you think would be addressed as the children play with the balls using music as part of this experience. Okay, um, creative arts and physical development, language, physical development, language and physical develop, physical development and logic and reasoning and math, social and emotional, language development, math knowledge, physical art, physical and art, um, music, physical and health and language and science. Okay, excellent, yeah. excellent. All right, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take you to the next slide and give you the answers. So obviously language development because they're gonna be both speaking and listening. Approaches to learning because they're trying new things and in the case of the older children, there's cooperation involved. Social and emotional development, engaging with others, engaging with you as a provider, and also self-regulation. Let's think about when we're using balls, we have to remember, you know, we don't just throw them at people randomly and hit them in the head. That's not okay. Um, creative arts and music, so both music and movement. Logic and reasoning, problem solving, you know, how are you going to throw the ball? How are you going to get the ball to your friend? I mean, what happens if the ball doesn't go where you want it to? Math knowledge, um, especially for the more advanced children, talking about what a sphere is. A ball is not a circle. That is a two-dimensional shape. A ball is a sphere. And learning that in a meaningful way, it will help them internalize that knowledge. Um, positional concepts, where did the ball go? Did it go behind you, beside you, under your, under your feet, or under your legs, or between your legs, or did it go under the couch? Um, physical development, health, obviously rolling and tossing a ball, and safety, you know, it's not okay to throw balls at people's faces when they're not looking, that would not be safe. Um, science knowledge, using their senses, and about the physical world. What happens when you toss a ball? It falls to the ground. Why does it fall to the ground? Gravity. So in that, again, one simple GWAS experiment, experience, you are covering, let's count them up, what, eight different areas of development, okay? So the point being that a simple experience like this at GWIS, we can help you see how you could potentially evaluate children in many different areas um, depending on what you're looking for at that current time which leads us to what are the learning indicators for those of you who are customers this is a little more tricky of a question do you know what the learning indicators are anyone Take a few minutes. All of you scrambling, trying to find your user's guide. <laughs> and if you don't know, that's okay. That's why we're doing this webinar. <laughs> that's exactly the point. Oh, there we go. Skills that make up the developmental areas. Yep. Yes. <laughs> you got it. That is exactly right. All right, let's move to the slide. GWIS has specific skills that fall under those 10 developmental areas, okay? There are 40 of them in total, and they link 
to a lot of the skills that you would find on your child assessments that you might use. Um, I know a lot of people use gold, for instance, right? So these indicators drill down farther. So let's say we just did the experience with the balls, right? And we know that that experience addresses physical development and health because they're gonna be tossing a ball, right? Um, so this will drill down further to talk about how that's a gross motor skill, right? Tossing a ball or kicking a ball. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this a step further and go from just the broad developmental area to the specific skills within that area and that's what our learning indicators are. So here's an example. We're going back to the packing and shipping experience that we just talked about two slides or three slides ago where they had the boxes and the tape and the scissors and they were doing all kinds of things, right? We know that one of the areas and all of the areas that that addressed are here, but one of those areas was language development, okay? In the GWIS curriculum, we have four learning indicators that fall under language development. LD1 is understand spoken language, LD2 is understands and then uses an ever-increasing vocabulary. LD3 uses language to express ideas, wants, and needs. And LD4 increasingly engage adults and other children in conversations. These descriptions of these learning indicators are going to probably sound sort of familiar to you because a lot of the child assessment tools that are out there that we looked at when we created GWIS use the same skill set. I mean, I think that I looked and Gold has 38 skills. So what we've done is we've helped you connect those dots and that's why these learning indicators are important. Now, in the lesson plans where you look at the daily plans, we have the picture codes, but we do not have these learning indicators written specifically with each activity on each page and there's a reason why for that. Um, it would clutter up the page. We have that information in the teaching guide. It's always been there. If you go to the back after the 10 days, after the school um, school age children activities and a couple other pages, you're going to find a page that has a chart. And we're going to look at that. So don't panic if you're not quite sure what I'm talking about. But the chart has by activity all the learning indicators by code that it addresses. So you would see packing and shipping on that chart. And you would not only see the codes for LD1, LD2, LD3, and LD4, you would see the approaches to learning codes, the social and emotional codes, the creative arts codes, all those codes, which then correlate to a skill, okay? This information is really important because it allows you to say, okay, I am working with a child on say fine motor skills and I want to know what activities in the GWIS curriculum this unit would help me when I'm doing my assessment of them to observe that skill and where they are. That's what our new piece connecting the dots is going to help you do. The chart would always have helped you do that but you had to know what the codes were and this will make it a lot easier. So, But it is important that you know that for every area of development like language, we have a series of skills. And we're gonna show you where that is so you can refer back to it. So we're gonna do a little practicing right here. We have a, uh, a little girl who's painting and, and her provider's engaging with her. And over on the left, I have LD1, LD2, LD3, and LD4. I would like you to type in the question box, which ones of those learning indicators you think she could observe the provider as she's engaging with this child as she's painting. So if you think, for instance, that definitely the child will be doing LD2 where she's demonstrating if she understands and then uses an ever-increasing vocabulary, put LD2. If you think it's LD4, put LD4. If you think it's two of them, put two. If you think it's three, put three. If you think it's all four, put all four. Type that in the question box and we'll see what people come up with. All of them, all, all of them, all four. <laughs> We have a super one. smart group tonight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. We've got some LD1 through 4, LD3, um, LD, yeah, all of them. 
All four. And that and that is the answer, all of them, right? She's going to have to understand what is spoken to her as the provider asks, let's hope, open-ended questions. Then she will share her ideas using an ever-increasing vocabulary. Maybe she wants the pink paint. She's going to ask for the pink paint. Um, she's going to engage with the provider, but there's other children at the table as well. So all of those areas would be addressed, all those skills. So let's say on your assessment, you need to evaluate this little girl on how she, incre how she engages with adults and children in conversation. Now you know while she's painting, that's the perfect time to do that. All right, now we're going to try another area. Same experience, but this time we're doing social and emotional, which are our SE codes. SE1 is demonstrates a secure relationship with caregivers and other adults is pos and positive interactions with other children. SE2 is a positive self-concept. You can read that yourself. SE3 has to do with self-regulations and following rules, and SE4 is a range of emotions. Again, which ones of those learning indicators do you think would be addressed during this painting experience? Okay, here we go. Uh, SE1, SE3, SE1, 2, and 3, all four, all four. Um, Well, that's all we got. I think everybody's on the right path. I know. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. So let's look at them each one, right? SE1 is a secure relationship with caregivers and adults as, whether, as well as positive interactions with other children. Could that happen during this experience? Absolutely it could. Um, positive self-concept by sharing preferences, expressing feelings, and displaying confidence. Could that happen? Absolutely. I want to use the red paint. I like red best. It's my favorite color. Um, I like painting. It makes me happy. Um, SE3, self-regulation by handling emotions and following rules. What do you do with the paint? How is it okay to use the paint? What is not okay to do with the paint? Um, and a range of emotions. It could just be as simple as painting, you know, being proud of the painting that they create or the fact that when they paint, they feel happy. So that absolutely could happen. All right, one more. Now we're going to do physical development and health. PD1 is importance of exercise and rest. PD2 is pride and take care of, us, care of yourself. Three is safe habits and basic safety rules. Four is gross motor, which are your big muscles. And five is your fine motor, which are your small muscles. So which ones of these do you think would be addressed during this experience? Sherry, do we have any answers yet? I'm sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. So I was giving you the PD5 and PD2, uh, PD3 and 5, PD1, 2, 3, and 5, 2, 3, and 5, 3, and 5, 3, and 3, and 5, and a 3, and 4, most likely PD1, 2, and 5. And this one's a little more, is a little trickier, right? So a lot of things could happen, obviously, but PD2 is going to happen as you wash up after you've painted, right? You have to wash your hands and you might even actually help wash up the paint brushes and that type of thing. Um, safety rules obviously falls under basic rules of, you know, what it's okay to do with the paint. It's not okay to eat the paint. It's not okay to put the paint near your eyes or, or your mouth or something along those lines. Gross mutter, we're not using any big muscles right here. Um, we're not running, we're not hopping, we're not climbing, but we are using our fine motor skills, which we're doing when we hold the paintbrush. Um, so again, in the GWIS curriculum, what we do is we do all this hard work for you. So when you look at the chart in the back of the teacher's guide or you look at our new connecting the dots piece, you're going to know exactly when you do an experience what skills you're developing. Um, so great. So where can you find these indicators? There are 40 of them, and where can you find them? Well, the first place you can find them where they've always lived is the user's guide. There's a section in the user's guide that has to do with the developmental areas and learning indicators, and I'm going to show you where that is. Um, there's two pages in there. 
that have all the learning indicators, I would highly recommend printing out that one page, front and back, or two pages if you print one-sided, so you have it at your fingertips. I myself have it at my fingertips, so when I'm writing, I have it there because I can't always remember all of them. Um, like I said, they're in the back of the teaching guide as a chart that is linked to the specific activities within that learn uh, within that teaching guide and I'll show you that again again that's always been there but our new connecting the dots piece has not always been there and we're going to take a peek at what that looks like that is one of the handouts so um, if again Sherry said if you if you don't have time to download it now or you don't want to download it now it will be and I'll show you where it will be on our website so you can grab it later those of you who are customers it's going to be listed as part of the program files for the two units for July so it'll automatically be there so now I would like to do a short survey because I know there are lots of formal child assessments out there like gold and ages and stages and many different ones. So I would like you to share which one you use in your program. And you can just type it in the question box. Ages and stages, uh, red leaf, DRDP, um, ages and stages, ASQ3, Gold. Ages and stages, yeah. yeah. Ages and stages. Um, red leaf, ages and stages, ages and stages. Teaching strategies, gold, mm -hmm. ages and stages. But things like that's a lot. Um, teaching strategies, goal again, and ages and stages. Okay, well, so. perfect. And and I want to cover this, especially for those of you who are not customers, and even those of you who are, and I know we have some quality specialists on the line too, and the question always comes up, do you have a formal assessment tool with GWIS? And the answer, in short, is no, but the long answer is that's intentional by design. When we looked at creating GWIS, we knew that there were a lot of wonderful formal assessment tools out there, so it was like, why would we want to reinvent the wheel? So what we did is we took a look at what they're assessing. And then we looked at, okay, we're covering all 10 developmental areas for all ages. So if we are in fact doing that, then you should be able to use whatever assessment tool works for you and your children will do quite well. And from what we're hearing anecdotally from our providers, for instance, I know I have a five-star provider in Ohio who's the highest you can go, accredited and everything else, and she uses us with Teaching Strategies Gold and finds it works very well. So um, that is why we did not create our own because we felt like there was really no need to. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the connecting the dots, which is our new component beginning in July. And it's a 16 to 17 page document. So it's not a short document, but what it does is it has all the GWIS indicators and then it shows you which activities for that unit address that indicator. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is we're going to actually go into one of these documents and dig into it and show you what's in there. But it allows you also, there's room for you to write in the code that you may use for your assessment, say, teaching strategies, gold, or ages and stages. There's a place for you to write that in where it correlates with us. So it'll make things a lot easier, we hope, for you. Okay, I want to pause for just a second and see if we have any questions about anything I've covered in the PowerPoint before I leave this and go into our website. Um, one person did ask how come they didn't see the answers and it's that's why I have to read them. We haven't figured out how to let you see all the answers. Um, but I don't see any other questions, Beth. I think we're good to go. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to just close out my, my PowerPoint here. Give me one second, shrink it down, and I'm going to go to our website. Um, so before I go into the connecting the dots piece to show you what that looks like and how it works, I want to show you where those learning indicators are because I know we have people who are not customers who won't necessarily have access to connecting the dots because that's linked with the unit. So you have to be a customer to actually access that one component, um, except of course the example we have given you. So I'm going to go under our products and go over here to user's guide. And you're going to see over here's a picture, which you can click on that and it will download the entire guide, or you can go over here to developmental areas and learning indicators and click that. And that pulls out section three, 
which is the section that deals just with the different areas of development. So if you want to refresh on you know, what language development is, what it looks like, you can go to this section and it takes every single one of these areas of development. It reminds you of the program symbol, it talks about what it is, and then it talks about what it looks like. So bear with me just one second because when I have my GoToWebinar toolbar up, I can't see my toolbar on the side to be able to grab and scroll really quickly. There are 10 pages like this, obviously, for the 10 areas of development. But after those 10 areas of development, if you keep scrolling, you are going to come to these pages. Um, so again, I would highly recommend that you print just these two pages out. And then you will know what LD1, LD2, LD3, LK1, LK2. So this goes through all 10 areas of development and has the specific learning indicators that are associated with it. Okay, it's a handy piece of paper to have at your fingertips. Um, that way, whenever you're looking at the grid in the back of the teaching guide, you will know what these codes mean. Okay, so again, just to reiterate where I went to get this, I went under our products. Now I'm going to go back home so you can see it from the get go. I wonder our products and then I went to the user's guide, and then I just clicked on that section, okay? Because that's important for you to know where that is. Um, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm actually signed in, because again, the connecting the dots piece is something that our customers have access to, but if you're not a customer, you would not. So I'm gonna go under the um, this much units, and I'm gonna go into our first unit for July, which we just posted these a little early because of tonight's webinar, I needed to have access to them. I'm gonna go under the English files. Um, we do have some components for those of you who are not customers in Spanish, like our family letters and digital family notes, but I'm gonna go into the English. First, before I go into the new connecting the dots piece, I wanna go into the teaching guide and show you where that chart is. So here's the teaching guide for picnic time. And if you scroll down, past the lesson plans, and, and I will show those of you who are not customers yet what our lesson plans look like. So here's a daily lesson plan. You'll notice it's not dated, that's intentional. We do our holidays and seasonal things separately. For instance, we just sent out an email about our Father's Day experience that's posted. Um, you'll see at the beginning a name of the unit, the focus, and then this is a cumulative list, all right? So practice in your memory what all these things mean, and I'll tell you for today what areas you're going to develop. So if you do all the GWIS experiences planned for today, you will address social and emotional, language development, physical development and health, approaches to learning, literacy knowledge, science knowledge, math knowledge, social studies, creative arts, and logic and reasoning. Okay, for those of you who are not customers, we have a health and safety tip every day, a teaching tip every day, and a transition idea. We have ways you can model language. We know this is super important when it comes to things like being evaluated using class and FICRs. Um, then we have what's called an exploring together, which is a group experience, but it's not a group experience where you as the provider are just talking and the children are listening. Everybody's engaged together. Um, in this case, you're sharing a story and then you're doing things with the story. Here's the cumulative list of, of developmental areas for this activity. Language social and emotional, science, literacy, logic and reasoning, social studies, math, physical development and health, and approaches to learning. Okay, all GWIS experiences also have open-ended questions to help you engage children in back and forth conversations, which again is super important when you're being evaluated using class or FICRs. Then the second page of the experiences, we have two small group experiences, some of which are leveled, um, again, you see your picture codes for which areas these develop. You have your open-ended questions, and then at the bottom, you have an infant experience, and they have their picture codes as well, okay? So I just wanted to show that because I know we do have quite a few people on tonight that are not customers or, or are quality specialists. I wanted to make sure that you were aware, and you could see that link now of how we let you know when you look at our lesson plans exactly what developmental areas you're addressing. So again, bear with me really quickly while I get my toolbar to come down here so I can grab it. There are 10 days of experiences in each lesson plan book for each unit. There are two units in a month, so you have a total of 20 days of experiences. 
we actually plan within those 20 days way more than probably you're going to get done. And then again, some of the experiences that children really enjoy, so you'll want to continue them for more than one day. Um, after we have the 10 days of experiences, we have school age experiences. Um, the, there are six different activities on these pages. Same picture codes apply. Um, and these could be done with children who come after school or maybe in the summer you have them all day. And then we continue. This one has a, a, an original story with props. And I'm going to keep going. The directions for the make it sheets. And I'm going to keep going. And then voila, look what I found. Okay, in the back of each teaching guide has always been this chart that has, for instance, on day one, packing the picnic basket, all right? And then you see all those learning indicators. Now, I'm not so sure I can tell you verbatim what all of them mean, but if you have that printed out, you will know what they mean. So you can quickly look at all the experiences that you're going to do. And you're going to see what skills you develop as you do them with the children. So all 10 days of experiences with all the activities are on this page. And it's in the back of the guide, always has been and always will be. And then the school aides just spill over here because they just simply do not fit on that top page. So again, if you want to look at the chart where you can see on one piece of paper, okay, what learning indicators you're addressing when you do each experience go to the back of your teaching guide for that okay you will have to know and then print out that page or have that page handy from the user's guide what al1 al2 and al3 mean right but if you have that you'll be able to see what specific skills are being addressed during each experience okay does that make sense i hope it does all right so i'm going to back out of a teacher's guide and I'm going to scroll down so we can open up connecting the dots. As I said, this is an extensive booklet and it's designed to help you connect with your assessment tool, um, the experiences that you're doing. It also will make it easier if you're looking for a specific experience that addresses a specific skill so you can kind of plan ahead when you're evaluating children in different areas. So it starts out with just an explanation about what this is and how you would use it and how you can connect it to your tool. And then what it does is it has the same chart we just saw in the back of the teacher's guide, again, is right here with all the skills addressed by activity. And on this one, I was able to put the school age experiences down here. Then we go into by developmental area, okay? So in the blue, language development. Over here, LD1, understand spoken language. All of these experiences will address that one learning indicator, okay? In red, you can look at, if you're using ages and stages or you're using gold, there's gonna be some type of a code that aligns with understand spoken language. We all know that, right? So you can write whatever those codes are here that correlate with understand spoken language. And then additional experiences that you plan to address that skill, you can put over here, all right? So then we go on to LD2, understands and uses an ever-increasing vocabulary. All of these experiences with the page numbers listed address that specific skill. And again, you can write in whatever your code is or whatever you use with your assessment that you're using. And it goes on to, after we do language, then we have literacy. Now what you're gonna see is you're gonna see that some of the areas and some of the skills are gonna have a lot more like in language, because obviously that's part of most every experience that you do. Whereas some like LK1 shows an interest in books and stories, obviously that's not gonna be a part of every experience. So what you'll see is that some will have fewer than others, which just gives you an opportunity to plan more around that if you so choose. We also, for this area, for literacy knowledge, as those of you who are customers know, have our letters and literacy booklet of activities that really takes the children in more depth who are ready for letters, letter sounds, words, sentences, punctuation, beginning writing. Um, so all of the experiences within that letters and literacy booklet can address this 
area as well. So that's why it's noted here. So then we go on after literacy knowledge and we go into math, okay? So all of these experiences are going to address MK1, which is understands that numbers tell how many. There's a place again for you to put whatever the correlation is to your assessment and then planning your own. And then we go on, and again, you're gonna find, for instance, here with shapes and positional concepts, we just have a couple experiences. Maybe you wanna plan more of your own. With patterning, we only have one. So maybe you wanna to plan to do more of your own to reinforce that skill. Over the course of the year with GWIS, you will hit on all of these 40 skills many, 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 many times, right? You have to remember that within this one unit, yeah, we might talk about patterning one time, but that's one time in two weeks. We're probably gonna turn around and do it again with our next unit in the next two weeks and maybe even more than once. So everything's relative, right? Um, and so we go on from math knowledge, excuse me, I didn't mean to do that, to science knowledge, and then we go to logic and reasoning, and then we go to approaches to learning, and then we go to social and emotional and to creative arts and music and physical development and health and social studies knowledge. Okay, and you'll notice like this one develops a baseline understanding of how the past affects us and our community. There, we did not necessarily plan an experience in there for that during this particular unit. But again, over the course of the year, if you're with us for the whole year, we will hit on that for sure. Um, that is also a concept that's hard for children to understand. So you're talking about more advanced children and your older children, we can talk about history and, and that type of thing. But be rest assured, it will be covered. Does that mean that if you want to during this, it's picnic time, cover that on your own? You can't? Absolutely not. That's what we want you to do. So um, I just want you to be aware, if you see a box that doesn't necessarily have an experience, that just means that during this particular unit, we're not hitting on it, but over the course of the year, we definitely will. So with that said, I would, would love to hear from our current customers who are GWIS customers if they feel like this tool will help them in fact connect the dots from the experiences in the GWIS curriculum to the developmental areas to the learning indicators to their assessment. Okay, there is one question and um, probably from looking at all these activities the question is is there a um, is there a list for, that the provider can refer to that will identify the materials needed for each activity. Yes. And after we finish here, we can show you that. I did respond that, yes, there's a materials list every month. Um, okay, and responses are yes, awesome, yes, this will be awesome. Help save me time. <laughs> <laughs> that was our goal, yeah. but you know, you never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it appears that, it looks like a lot, but I think it will really help. Great. Well, that was the goal, right? The, and the reason we called it Connecting the Dots was because that's what you felt like we were helping you do. And and we know all of you are super, super busy, right? We know that doing your assessments is, is a challenge because you have so many other things on your plate that you have to get done. So this was our way of helping you see that the information that you needed was really always there because the chart was always in the back of the teaching guide, but we felt like we needed to drill it down a little bit more to make it easier for you. So let's say you have a child maybe that is, um, oh, let's just pick something here. Let's say you have a child who is working on uh, a language skill, such as um, understanding and then using an ever-increasing vocabulary, which a lot of twos and threes are doing, right? They're learning to use more words. You can then look at all the experiences we have planned and say, okay, I'm going to plan the, to work on this skill with those ch children during the planning carrots tops experience, experience, okay, when we do that. And you'll know that when you do that experience, that's the skill you're going to watch for. And you can note on their assessment. So we're hoping that this makes, you, makes your life a little bit easier and saves you some time because we know that time is super precious to all of you. 
Um, so any more questions on the connecting the dots and then I'll show the materials list so everybody knows what that looks like. Somebody asked a question about it. No more questions coming up right now, but after the webinar is over, you will, you can always contact us um, from at the bottom of the page, contact us or either right up there at the top under the support tab. So here's the materials list, and as Sherry said, there's one of these with every unit that we do. Anything in red just means it might need a, you might need a little extra time to locate or gather it. Um, the first five days are on the first page, the second five days are on the second page, and then we have the third page that has your school age experiences, if you so choose to do those, and things that you would need to gather or purchase. And mainly the purchase is if you're going to cook. Um, or do some cooking, like here we're going to make oatmeal cookies, and we're also going to do some patterning with fruit, um, and then things that you would need to let parents know that you need, and that's a great way to promote family involvement too. I was just writing the unit that comes after this one. It was about storytelling, and one of the things we're going to do for a story is stone soup, and we're going to make all natural soup with mud and sticks and rocks, so obviously we need some old kitchen tools, so that'd be something that parents could send in. I mean, everybody's got an old pot or an old spoon that they really don't need anymore but you could take it outside and use it for that activity so um, those kinds of things would be noted on this materials list um, any questions particularly from those of you who are not customers out there um, that I can answer while I'm actually in the program files any other the components so with each G GWIS unit there are components that come along with it the first unit has story props the second unit has a teaching tool and a, and a printable puppet uh, everything you need is right here on a website we do not ship anything you don't have to pay any shipping and handling you don't have to wait for it to arrive you literally sign up on our website subscribe once your payment clears you have access you sign in just like I'm signed in right now and you download print and we do encourage everyone to save, 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 save it to your computer, save it to the cloud, I use Google Drive, save it to a flash drive, save it to an external hard drive, because we all know computers can be funky things and they can crash. And you know, sometimes people will lose files from, from long ago and at, at that point we don't have them anymore to send them. So it's just really important, like when we post new ones like today, that you go out there and you download and you save them. So you have them in two places is, uh, th some people say three, but two is pretty good. <laughs> There is one question, um, are the downloads free? And if you are a customer, then you would see these pages that Beth's got pulled up right now, because those are the units, and there's two units posted every month. As far as the user guide, which she was um, showing you the learning indicators and um, the different domains, that is free for you to, uh, you can download that at any time. Okay, we do have some questions. I'm signed in right now. If I click the button and sign out, this GWE customer tab where I just was and went to the curriculum itself will disappear. But all the other tabs, YGWiz, Our Products, FCC Tools, Support, and Order Now will remain there. And anything that's there under Our Products, FCC Tools, Support, all of that is available to anyone at any time, whether you're a customer or not. OK, yeah. like all of our training webinars that we have done in the past about open ended questions and diversity and a whole lot of other things live here underneath this tab. So um, there's a lot of free material in addition to obviously um, if you're a paid subscriber, what you have access to. Another question is, do you provide the books also on the program? And there's a book list, but we encourage you to, if you don't already have some of them, to go to the library and you can get them ahead of time and check them out so that you'll have them. Um, there's a question, what is a special price? Well, if you're not a customer and you've attended the webinar tonight, if you do decide to come, you can enter the code WEB2020 and get $10 off your very first order because it is recurring. Um, and are they on your site for a month? Each unit is actually up there for about 45 days. So just like the July unit is already posted July 17th, I mean June 17th, and it'll probably stay up till about the 5th or 6th of August. Um, so that's why Beth is saying 
download, save, 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 and then put it in a folder on your computer because once it comes down, we can't get it to you. So we really encourage you to get those things. Um, and then you can use it whenever you would like. Is there a blank lesson plan? Uh, there's some blank forms in the user guide but I'm not and blank like scheduling. Um, we have not I, done a blank lesson plan form yet. Uh, somebody just asked me that question the other day, um, and I don't know if you're in Ohio, but I think this person was in Ohio because they're required to do some kind of special form there. So we haven't done one yet, but that doesn't say we won't. And a lot of the components, to be honest with you, like that materials list I just showed you, came about because a customer asked for it. So we are we try to be really responsive to our customers and listen to their needs and and if it's something we can do, you know, um, we will do our best to try. Uh, there's a suggestion which is a great suggestion. It says that maybe you can let the others know that YouTube has many of the books on the list um, as read alouds, so you can yep. download them from YouTube. It's so funny you just said that. I was gonna say that. Um, we try to use technology to your benefit at GWiz. We know that there are rules and regulations regarding kids watching videos, but in GWiz, we use it in an intentional format. So for instance, like if you wanna share a book like Stone Soup, um, we will give you a prop to do that and we will give you the text so you don't have to find the book if it's something that we are writing into the lesson plans. If it's supplemental books, like in the book list in the back, YouTube is an excellent option for read alouds and you are correct. There are a lot of read alouds available on YouTube um, because especially right now, libraries are closed. You can't go to the library and get the books that you need and, and most people don't have a lot of money to go out and buy them. So I think that's an excellent idea of using that. And, and we'll, use, we'll use technology too. Let's say we're doing a unit on um, well, we just did one on the pond, right? And you may live in a part of the country where ponds are not a thing. So your children may have no base knowledge of what a pond is. And so I found a really great video. It was just really a nature video about what a pond is. And it, and it's, and it talked about what, what is there and how it sounds. You could hear the different animals and the frogs. And so we use it in an intentional way to help children build background knowledge when we feel it's something that would benefit. And in most cases, those are very short. We're talking like a few minutes because we know it doesn't need to be long. Other okay. questions, Sherry? I'm, I'm just checking. Um, a comment, my licensing consultant and past to quality mentor in Indiana definitely suggests to use technology or computers to do the read aloud. So good. Excellent. Good. I think that's a way for children to see that technology is much more than just playing video games or watching <laughs> movies and TV. <laughs> Okay, I don't see any more questions, but um, Beth, you want to show them where the um, survey, the the post assessment, and yes. they can, and where they can yes. yeah get their certificate. Um, and I do know before we before we go to that, I wanted to say to everyone, um, I know we have a lot of non-customers. If you scroll down and you keep going, you'll see our pricing. Um, it's eighteen ninety five for a month. 53.95 for a quarter or 192.95 and with that code that Sherry just shared web 2020 you can save $10 off that that or that um, it is a recurring subscription just like a magazine or a newspaper so once you start it'll continue and you'll be charged monthly quarterly or yearly until you cancel which you can do at any time you're not locked in for a specific time when you sign up it's not like you know you can't stop if I mean for instance this spring obviously everything's been in disarray so we've had people stopping and starting and coming back and you know it's it's fine whatever you need to do you control your subscription um, but yes in terms of where you're going to find the link to the post assessment and what that post assessment is and it's not hard don't panic um, it's just a couple questions but what that post assessment allows you to do is once you've answered the questions then when you finish and you click submit pay cl pay close attention because there's going to be a message that pops up and within that message is a link to print out a pdf of a certificate of attendance for this webinar okay so you have to do the post assessment if you want to get to the certificate and where you're going to go is under the support tab so if you have a pencil 
and you're not sure you're going to remember this like me at this late hour of night. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not really that late according to my, you know, college kids that stay up half the night, uh, but for me it is. Um, you're going to go to support. Then you're going to go to webinar training video and click there. And if you scroll just a little bit, you're going to see connecting the dots. And there's a handout number one, that's gonna be the PDF of the PowerPoint that I did. And handout number two is the sample from July. We're giving you the July connecting the dots piece, um, even if you're not a customer, just so you can remember what it all looks like. And then you're gonna click here to go to the post assessment, but don't do it yet. And the reason you're not gonna do it yet is I haven't turned it on. So once the webinar ends, I will go out, I will turn it on so it's accepting submissions, and then you can go ahead and complete the post assessment. And again, once you click submit, pay attention, because there's gonna be a message that pops up that says, thanks for submitting it, here's your link to the certificate, and then you can download that, print it out, fill it out with your name and the date, um, and you'll have that for your records, okay? So again, I went under support, and then I went to webinar training videos. And on this page, if you scroll down, you're going to see all the different webinars we've done. You can watch them and then you can complete those post assessments if you want to get your, you know, to get certificates as well. All right. Any questions about how you're going to get to the post assessment and certificate, but not until after we're done and give me just a few minutes once we're finished to actually turn it on. Um, there is a question. It, they got the code right, uh, Web 2020, but I read the question too quick, and I said, it, the question was, is it only good for today? But it is good. You can use it up to 30 days after this webinar. Um, let's see. There was oh, Also on that same page where Beth was showing the post-assessment and the handouts, when we get the recording of this webinar, that will be posted right there. So you can come back and listen, um, you know, just to, if you want to remind yourself what about learning their alphabet and numbers good okay. question we always that get a, that <laughs> we do and we actually have a we actually have a whole thing about that okay so we are not a letter of the week or a number of the week curriculum but that does not mean we're not covering those things and if you look at that connecting the dots piece you'll see that MK1, MK2 both have to do with numerals and counting, and you'll see a slew of experiences that address those skills. Within the, the, the connecting the dots piece under the lit literacy knowledge, which I believe is the yellow sections, you're gonna see some experiences, but then there's a book that goes with each one of our units, and I'll show you what that looks like. I'm gonna go back into this bunch of units. Now remember, I'm logged in, so you can't get to this part unless you're logged in. Um, let me go to English, because this is a question we get asked all the time, and this is another reason why we added this piece. So I'm gonna scroll down to Literacy and Letters, and what you're gonna see is a booklet of experiences, and what we have done, now this is only for children who are ready for this, is we've taken experiences we have written into the lesson plan, such as what is in the picnic basket, it's an activity on page five, and you're gonna reinforce letters associated with the foods that you play the game with, and it tells you exactly how to do that. Or you could scroll down and maybe you choose to do what will we need on page 10. You're gonna do the letter P plus other letters you wanna reinforce. Okay, so this booklet contains experiences that meaningfully introduce children to letters, letter sounds, words, beginning writing, because it's really important research shows for that to be something that is not an isolated type of thing. Like in other words, just saying today we're gonna talk about the letter P doesn't mean nearly as much to the children if for instance, you're talking about we're doing a story called The Princess and the Pie in the second unit, Storytellers, and then you talk about the letter P as you make pie, and then maybe you find the letter P in a recipe, and you talk about things that start with P, or you think of, make a list of pies that you could make with things that start with P, like pumpkin, or pears, or peaches, or whatever. So, in other words, yes, we do cover all those things, but they are integrated within the experiences within the curriculum in a meaningful way. So same thing with numbers, color, shapes, positional concepts, um, all of that. Does that make sense? Hopefully, yes. Yes. I should respond, yes. 
So um, we want to thank you for coming tonight. Um, was there anything else we needed to show, Beth? On the, I don't on think the so. Just to reiterate one more time, under the support tab and then training webinar videos, that's where you're going to find the link to the post assessment. But again, give me just like two to three minutes to go out because I have to go in and turn it on. Um, and if you have any problems after you've submitted it, you know, just shoot us an email. The best way to reach us is actually under the support tab, contact us. There's a form to fill out with any, if you have any questions, if you need help with anything, that's the best way to reach us is under support, contact us. Um, and we try to respond to emails, you know, in a, in a timely fashion. Um, but there will be a short survey pop up after this webinar is over and we would love your feedback because it really helps us to improve what we do. Um, so if you would take just a second to fill it out, that would be awesome. But Sherry, I think that's it on my end. Anything on your yeah. end? No, the survey is not the post assessment, so don't get the two confused. So no. um, when the webinar yeah. ends, the survey will automatically pop up. You're going to have yeah. to go to do the post assessment. Yes. Right, and click it right there when Beth links it. But otherwise, I think that's it for tonight. We do appreciate all of you attending. We had quite a large group tonight, so um, I know it was a lot to cover, but it will be recorded and probably up by lunch tomorrow sometime. So we look forward to any comments or questions or suggestions. And um, well, thanks again for coming and good night. Yes, thank you so much. Have a great evening. Bye. Thanks. Bye.